Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within this options tutorial series. Today we will be focusing on strike prices, essentially what constitutes the three different states that an option contract can be in, that is in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Now, of course, this is incredibly important to understand because when you are a holder of a contract and it expires in the money, it will actually be assigned to you and it will actually be assigned with a value equal to parity. If you are out of the money, however, at expiration, then that options contract will quite literally have zero value. So if you're holding it, you just lost whatever you paid for that contract, which we'll get into in the premium section. But for now, we're focusing just on strike prices and just what constitutes in the money, at the money, and out of the money. So this is going to be best done with actual examples, some visuals, as I'm more of a visual person myself. So let's get into live stream right over here. And this is our generic uh, options setup with, again, the strike prices right smack down in the middle. We got calls on the left-hand side and puts on the right-hand side. Now, first things first, I'm going to focus on calls and only calls. So a call option is going to be in the money if the strike price is less than the price of the underlying. It will be at the money, the, the, the strike price closest to the price of the underlying is your at the money, to be very clear. And then anything, any price, any strike price that is above the current price of the underlying is considered out of the money. So in the example of calls, we can see very easily here that granted a price of going into the charts of 3806. Let's just do a little bit of an exercise. What is considered in the money? Well, as we said, any strike price that is lower than the current price of Bitcoin is considered in the money. So all of these guys down here, all the way up until 3875. So everything from 3375 to 3750, are all considered in the money. That means if I were along any of these strikes, if I if I was an owner of, of any of the options contracts of these strikes at expiration, I'd be assigned. And uh, in the value of that option is going to be parity. So if I bought it for, we'll get we'll get into pricing of that later. But if I bought it for less, if if the premium that I paid is less than the actual value of, of uh, parity at expiration, that actually makes money which is the desired goal typically. Um, so with that said, the 3875 strike is actually out of the money and all the strikes above that. So that means that all of the strikes, if, if we were to be at this price point by expiration date, which is right here, see uh, it's the end of the week on Met on March 1st. Uh, this is done in, in um, what's it called in, in European style, by the way. Uh, this was very difficult for me to get used to at first, but uh, but it's it's the day first, then the month, then the year, not the month first, then the day, then the year. Um, anyways, so if I owned any of the, if I was an owner of any of the 3875 strikes uh, or, or above, those would be zero. So if I paid what is it? Thirty about twenty-eight bucks right now for, or sorry, thirty-eight bucks right now for a thirty-eight seventy-five strike call. Then, and, and it closed like this at the end of the, at the end of the week. Then I would quite literally lose all all the money that I spent on the premium paid. So again, our at the money strike is going to be the closest strike to the price of the underlying. So currently, price is still thirty-eight oh six, and that would mean that the closest strike price to that is actually 37.50 right here. That is gonna be closer than the 38.75 strike right here. So again, very, very simple. And this is what I wanna keep it very, uh, very, and, th and this is how I wanna present these videos, is just one piece at a time. So feel free to come back to this video. This is incredibly important to understand, even though that we're gonna kind of go through this relatively fast, this is meant to be viewed over and over again. Of course, if I was a seller of calls, which remember you can sell calls, then that means that if I sold any of the strike prices above the current uh, the uh, the current out of the money strikes, which would be thirty eight seventy five and above, if I sold any of these, and then at expiration, price action was still where it is right now at thirty eight oh six, and or and they, and they expired out of the money, then whatever I sold that option contract for, I get to keep, I get to collect as if I sold if I sold these 3875 strike calls for uh, 38 bucks right now, or I suppose you could sell them for 28 bucks, uh, 19.6 19, 19 times, then if we close below this area, then I'd be able to collect for each and every one of those contracts that I sold plus, you know, multiplied by the premium price. Okay, again, now we're going to go over to the puts, which we're just gonna flip everything on its face. 
So don't let this confuse you. Don't let this confuse you. Just think of puts in a way as judging in the money, at the money, and out of the money as quite literally just the opposite of what we just discussed with the calls. So the puts over here, again, with the current price of 3806, let's just go through it. What's going to be in the money? In the money for puts is if the price of the underline is less than the strike price. Less than a strike price. So what would that mean? Which, which of these are in the money? Well, everything up until 30, uh, up until 3750 is considered in the money. So all of these 3875 and below are technically in the money. By the way, just as a, just as a little bit of a dummy test, what you can do if you feel confused, the ones that are in the money are always going to be intrinsically more valuable. So when you look at the prices, the prices of the in the monies are going to be are going to be more than the ones that are at the money and then out of the money. And it's, you know, as the deeper that you go, the more it's going to be worth just intrinsically speaking. So again, your, your 46, 70, uh, your 46, 25 strike are going to be, you know, you can buy them for a thousand bucks, right? Um, they're being sold for a thousand bucks at least. Now, obviously the best bids on these are not really representative of what the true market value is, but you can kind of go off for the best ask right now. And we have a new subscriber as well. What's up, Mr. McClint? McClint, good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Uh, we can view this at a later date. So that also begs the question, then what is at the money? What is considered at the money for, for puts right now? Remember, put, or sorry, at the money is the strike price that is closest to the current price of the underline, which again, we're going to use the, the, the price of the underline at 3806, as that's what it still currently is, has not moved in the last 10 minutes since I've been trying to make this video. Um, and... And that means that the closest strike price to that would still be 3750. The at the monies are going to be the same. They're always going to be the same because it's just the difference between the, the current price of the underline and the, the closest strike price to that. Out of the money for puts are going to be anything, any price that is lower, any strike price that is lower than the current price of the underline. So what does that mean? That means that anything 3750 and above are considered out of the money. And that means that at expiration, when, when we get to this date, the 1st of uh, March, 2019, if I were to own any of these 3750 strike or, or lower puts, and we expired there at the same price at 3806, those would be considered worthless. So if I owned any of these, they would be I would lose all the money that I spent for them. So again, if I bought this 3750 uh, strike put for 43 bucks, I would lose $43 for every contract that I own. Now, of course, just like with calls, you can sell these as well. So if I wanted, so if I actually sold these same 3750 strike uh, puts for $34.28 at expiration, if we were still at this price point or higher or just anywhere above 3750 then what would happen well i would actually make $34.28 for every contract that i sold at that price point of course there is one example of something that can happen what happens if at expiration the price of the underline is equal to the strike price. What happens if that happens? Well, in European style, it's actually quite simple. In European style, it would mean that it's quite literally just zero because it's only going to be worth parity at expiration to begin with, which again, we'll get into later. I don't want to overload in any single one video and I want these to be able to be come back to um, as, uh, as, that's, as that's kind of how it's designed. So again, we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, the big news is, is just deciding what is in the money, what is at the money, and what is out of the money, and what does that mean for expiration, which we'll get into later. I'll see you in, I believe that that is the end of this video. That's all I wanted to say about calls and puts. Again, calls, they are in the money if the strike price is less than the price of the underlying. They are out of the money if the strike price is greater than the price of the underlying. Puts, quite literally the opposite. They are in the money if the strike price is greater 
than the other one. You can see that I have to remember myself. And they are out of the money if the strike price is less than the price of the underline. That's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.